Good afternoon. Welcome to Good Shepherd Church as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our presider is Father Cedric Wilson. Please stand and join in singing our entrance hymn at the Lamb's High Feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, with Easter joy, let us be one with the newly baptized, remembering our own immersion into Christ's saving death and resurrection. Let us give praise and thanks for the gift of water. Please respond, blessed be God. Most merciful Father, from the font of baptism, you have made the new life of your children well up within us, and so we pray. Blessed be God. You have been pleased to unite by water and the Holy Spirit all the baptized into one people in your Son, Jesus Christ, and so we pray. Blessed be God. You free us by the Spirit of your love, whom you pour into our hearts, so that we may delight in your peace, and so we pray. You chose the baptized that they may joyfully proclaim to all the nations the gospel of your Christ. And so we pray. Blessed be God. Be pleased now to bless this water which will remind us of our baptism. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
and let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence. When he had decided to release him, you denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins. And not only for our sins, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This Sunday, we continue the story of the two disciples who encountered the risen Christ on the road to Emmaus. After the death of Jesus, they had left Jerusalem as fearful individuals, broken, devastated, empty, fearful from what they had seen and experienced, and wondered what would happen to them now that Jesus would, was gone from them. What direction would their lives take now? And along the road, as the gospel tells us, they met the resurrected Christ, but they don't recognize him until they had shared some stories and sat down with him and broken bread together. This became a journey that was filled with so many emotions on so many different levels. It became a journey that moved from sorrow to joy, from uh, fear to courage, from despair to hope. And so these disciples, upon engaging in this encounter, returned immediately back to Jerusalem. They turned right around to share all that they had witnessed. And the gospel this Sunday, this is a continuation of this story, and in the midst of their conversations to the other disciples, Jesus again appears to them saying, peace be with you. Now remember, in the midst of all that they were experiencing, they had turned away from their Lord, and he appears in their midst, and he says, peace be with you. Shalom. And that shalom is more than what we say when we say peace. Much more than that. When the Jews extend peace to one another, that shalom, I wish you fullness of life, they say. Healing, grace, and abundance of life. Imagine Jesus offering this 
to his followers after this terrible experience, he comes in their midst. And recognizing that they are terrified that they may be seeing a ghost, Jesus says, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? He gives himself to them to be seen and held. He eats with them. He teaches them to understand the scriptures. And then he commissions them to go out as witnesses to all the nations. The story has uh, four parts to it. Four parts. The disciples meet. They share stories and they listen. They break bread. And they depart knowing that they will see each other again. This is much like what we do every Sunday. Christ continues to invite us again and again to teach us about how to understand the scriptures and to live by its word in our own daily lives. Christ is present to us in both word and in sacrament, that is in the Eucharist. And then we are sent from here sent from the sacred spot, transformed, changed, back into our homes, our schools, our businesses, our communities, transformed to be Christ to other people, to proclaim that saving love and joy to the community that we encounter. To enable us to do all of this, we receive the same gift Jesus gave the disciples, the gift of peace, shalom. And Jesus' greeting of peace each time he sees the disciples is both a greeting of peace and it is also a gesture of forgiveness. It is a greeting of peace, but it is also a gesture of forgiveness. The Easter message is lasting peace. The Easter message doesn't end within the 50 days of our celebration. It goes beyond that. That's our life. And so we reflect on what those disciples experience, sorrow and fear, devastation, hopelessness. All those weighed them down. And they can weigh us down, and they can harden our hearts from finding any peace. And so the gospel asks us about peace in the midst of our own lives. What troubles our hearts today? What disturbs our inner peace? What makes us feel sad? and hopeless in our lives. Whatever it is, God meets us here. And with the stirring of our hearts to the pain of those around us, God is calling us to act, to move forward, just as those first disciples did. Great changes are needed from all of us. Jesus had been with the disciples all the way, even though they did not recognize him. But that can be true in our lives today as well. We are reminded that the tomb is open. But sometimes our minds are closed. Jesus appears to us today in the people around us, in the midst of the world, in the poor, in the sick, the needy, the neglected, the rejected, the exploited, and the persecuted. He is there in the suffering and in the stirring of our own hearts. And these, this is where we encounter the risen Lord. This is where the, the intersections occur, if you will, of Jesus. These are the intersections of Jesus' life and our lives. 
stirring, shattering, breaking open, restoring, these are all places of that intersection. And despite how it feels, that is in the midst of our own brokenness, it is not an ending. It wasn't the ending for the disciples, those women and those men. Rather, there is more to it than we often see it or know. Shattered lives, broken bread, restored lives. Jerusalem, Emmaus, Jerusalem. That's the pattern that's given to us in the gospel today. And it's like a cycle. But it's given to us in, in the gospel to help us stop and reflect. Christ the Lord longs and desires to open our minds to understand the scriptures. And he is constantly inviting us to question and reflect, to be witnesses for this time and this world. We have been sent the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that same spirit guides us and inspires us every single day to new life, to a new vision, to a new recognition of his presence in our lives. This is what Jesus did for the disciples, and it is what he does for us today. The world needs more examples of lives that are transformed by the grace of God and moved by the Holy Spirit. So as we continue our on the way, that those two words, the way, really has some significance for us because it reflects our accompanying Jesus on the road, our accompanying Jesus on the way of salvation. You might see it in some religious magazines called The Way. I think the Jesuits had a magazine called The Way. And you might hear of that often. That's what that refers to. We are on the way and always will be on the way. We're more familiar with hearing the journey, being on the journey of salvation. But whatever image we look to or refer to or feel comfortable with, this is what Jesus is calling us to do, to accompany him on our journey, transformed by his grace and the Holy Spirit through this Easter season. We pray, may the risen Christ give us the shalom, the peace needed in our hearts to know that he is with us. Even if we struggle and even if we feel that we are lost, this too, this too becomes a journey from sorrow to joy, from fear to courage, from despair to hope. The great Saint Augustine said as bishop when to his people in his diocese during this season, he said to his people, we are an Easter people. We are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. So too for us, we are an Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. During this Easter time, the church bids us to pray the Apostles' Creed. And so together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus did not want his disciples to remain troubled, and so he assured them of his continuing presence. We now bring our needs that trouble us before the Lord, assured of God's presence in our neediness. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all God's people, may we experience each day a deeper love for Jesus. <coughs> present in the word of God and in the sacraments of our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the peace of the risen Lord inspire them to bring an end to violence and war and to protect the life and dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized, and those recently received into the full communion of our Catholic Church. May they joyfully continue their journeys of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, homebound, and hospitalized, that they may receive healing and peace, including Jose Manuel Canizales. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those who have died, that they may enjoy the gift of eternal life, including Jason Vaccarano, Arlene Hosu Acosta, Rosemary Murray, and Richard Selva, whose funeral mass will be on Monday, April 15th. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, May we live as an Easter people, serving one another and those who are in need. And for Benjamin Tolhurst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear our prayers and help us to live as faithful witnesses to Jesus, our crucified and risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. <clears throat> praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ Jesus. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Jesus said, I am the bread, needed long to give you life. You who will partake with me, need not ever fear to die. I receive announcements. Our building project has reached another major milestone. We will celebrate daily mass in our new chapel beginning this Tuesday, April 16th at 7 p.m. with the mass in Spanish. Then on Wednesday, April 17th, we will resume daily Eucharistic adoration from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the chapel, followed by the 9 a.m. daily mass. Faith formation re registration for classes in the new year is now open. To register your child, scan the QR code in the bulletin or visit the website. 
All are invited to a special holy hour of Eucharistic Adoration on Wednesday, April the 17th at 6 p.m. Deacon Mike O'Neill will lead us in prayer with music. Uh, the Sacrament of Reconciliation will also be available from 6 to 7 p.m. Our next RCIA class begins this Wednesday, April the 17th. This program is for adults who are not baptized or are baptized in another Christian tradition and would like to become members of the Catholic Church. Please see the bulletin for further information. Please join us for dinner and a presentation on Living God's Call to Care for Creation by Jose Aguto, Executive Director of the Catholic Climate Covenant. The event will take place next Saturday, April 20th, after the 5 p.m. Mass in Creedon Hall. Tickets for our Spring Fling Dinner and Dance on April 27th are on sale after Mass today. Middle school students are invited to the Arlington Diocese Bash on May 4th at Bishop O'Connell High School. Our parish will have a group attending and will provide transportation. To register your middle school child, please visit our website. Let us continue to pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Good plan. 10.30. 10.30. 10.30. 